the job with that. Yes, so this is lecture nine. And again, we are always relating our lectures to the course objectives. So we are now talking about the first one. And this one is specifically um, talking about material handling systems. And I'm going to provide an introduction and then we'll go in detail about the different type of equipment that is available for uh, different processes. So the objective is to learn for this lecture about some of the material handling equipment requirements into a facility. And it's an introduction. I don't know if you remember this uh, diagram that we show it was in the first lecture or this semester um, in which we mentioned that we were going to focus on this branch of the uh, facilities planning topics. So we were going to focus only on the design of the facility um, and that involved three different areas, the structural design, layout design, and the handling system design. So, so far we have discussed most of our lectures were related to this one. We touched a little bit on structural design, but we now are going to focus on this component in handling system or material handling. So there's three components for material handling. Um, the first one are the materials. Which are the products, items, substances, and or people which are being moved, transport, or physically relocated. The second component is the move. which is the origin, travel path, destination, frequency to be made. So some of the product might need just to move from one point, point A to point B uh, with a very specific uh, track. But some of them might need some more flexibility. They might need to go to several stations. Um, so you need to know the type of move that you have to make in order to plan for um, the material handling. And then finally, the method, which is the equipment, people, procedures, physical facilities to be used to make uh, the move. So here's the, you can see this as, as an equation. So you can ask why we need to move this and then talk about what, where, when, how, and who. So basically, you take into account what type of material, where do you have to move, and when do you have to move that material, and that's what's going to tell you how and who is going to make uh, that uh, transportation of the, of the goods. There's a lot of information about this online. Um, there's a organization that focuses on material handling systems. Um, it's recognized by the uh, industrial engineering, uh, uh, the Institute of Industrial Engineering. So some of the information that I'm presenting here is part of that, um, of that information that is provided by this uh, association. So the material handling taxonomy, this is the Cottage Industry Council of Material Handling Education. So we can classify uh, material handling equipment in um, different areas. Um, you have conveyor screens, industrial trucks, or not equipment at all. We can also classify them based on the positioning equipment, unit load formation equipment, storage equipment, and identification and control. So, 
let's discuss some of the material handling equipment. Any questions so far? So again, we're going to go over some concepts here. I'm going to show you some pictures, uh, talk about some of the equipment that you might find in industry and, and so on, and about the difference between them. So uh, material handling equipment is used for the movement and storage of material within a facility or at a site. And the material handling equipment can be classified into the following five major categories. The first one is the transport equipment. And this is the equipment that is used to move material from one location to, the, to another. So between workplaces, between loading docks, and a storage area, and so on. And the major subcategories of transport equipment are conveyors, and if you haven't seen a conveyor in the industrial uh, facility, you just have to go to the HEV and the idea is the one that the conveyors that they use to move the, the items when you're going to, uh, to pay for your food. Um, so it's the same idea, um, but I'm going to show you different type of conveyors um, in the next few minutes. Then we have cranes. Industrial. Trucks. And material. Can also be transported using not equi no equipment. And here's where you need to take into account um, the employees' uh, safety. So there might be some cases in which you can have the operator moving some of the of the goods from one place to another, but you have to be careful. You don't want to get the employee injured, so there will be some of the things that you need to consider for such type of decisions, and we're going to talk about that also in this course. Um, so that's the first category, the transport, uh, transport equipment. The second category is the positioning equipment. And this is the equipment used to handle material at the single location so that it's, it is in the correct position for subsequent handling, machining, transport, or storage. Um, so you can think about the, the cranes, for instance. So you can hold that particular component and you can keep it there, um, perform some of the operators operations to it. Um, unlike Transport equipment, positioning equipment is usually used for handling at the single workplace. A material can also be positioned manually using no equipment. The third type of material handling equipment is called the unit load formation equipment. And this one is used to restrict materials so that they maintain their integrity when handled as single load during transport and for storage. So if materials are self-restrained, um, for example, a single part or interlocking parts, then they can be formed into a unit load with no equipment. The fourth type is storage equipment.
And this one is uh, equipment used for holding or buffering materials over a period of time. Um, some storage equipment may include the transport of materials, uh, for example, SR machines or of an AS or RS or storage carousels. Um, if materials are blocks stacked directly on the floor, then no storage equipment is required. And finally, the identification and control equipment. Um, so this is the equipment used to collect and communicate the information that is used to co coordinate the flow of materials within a facility and between a facility and its suppliers and customers. Um, RFID is one of them. So you have sensors basically scanning the barcodes of these uh, components. And in that way you can say, okay, the, these components are located in this area or we are having this flow on this particular area of the, of the facility and so on. So the identification of materials and associated control can be performed manually uh, with no uh, specialized equipment. So in addition to having these uh, scanners, sensors, and so on, we can also perform these tasks um, manually. So for the first one, uh, transport equipment, the major subcategories of transport equipment, again we mentioned this already, so our conveyors, which is the equipment used to move material over a fixed path between specific points. We have cranes, equipment used to move material over variable paths within a restricted area. We have industrial trucks, which is the equipment used to move materials over variable path with no restrictions on the area covered by the movement, um, unrestricted area. So, you know, the forklift is one example of those. And no equipment. So if you decide to have an employee move that manually, that's also an option. So for transport equipment, we have three areas of trees, a battle pack, and lots of restricted areas, so that's what we're trying to represent here. Uh, Conveyors have a fixed path, so we are representing that with this line. And industrial trucks have variable path on unrestricted area, so they can cover more uh, space. So, Conveyors are used when material is to be moved frequently between specific points and to move materials over a fixed path and where there is sufficient flow volume to justify the investment for the equipment. So this is very expensive. So that's why you need to make sure that you have a very high volume of units to be moved from point A to point B to justify such investment. And conveyors can be classified in different ways. Um, the first one is the type of product being handled, which can be unit load or bulk. can be classified also based on the location of the conveyor and whether or not 
loads can be a, can accumulate on the conveyor. And just to give you an idea of different types of conveyors, here's a list. So as you can see, there are multiple options. Can go from wheel conveyor, roller conveyor. These two I've seen um, in stores a lot when you have to move load. Um, chain conveyors. Slack conveyor, flatbed conveyor, those are all used in the industry. Um, these type of conveyors right here are the vertical conveyors. These are more used when you have uh, to move like um, materials such as rocks or materials used mostly in uh, construction industry um, and, and so on. So we can talk about some of them. So here we have an example of a chute conveyor. So you basically have some type of slope and you throw that from a higher location to a lower location. And then you have the wheel conveyors. Some of them provide you with the flexibility of expanding them and depending on the space that you have. Um, but the idea is that you will push them and the wheels will allow you to push the materials with no trouble. Um, so the gravity roller conveyors, difference between this one and the wheel conveyor is the instead of having wheels here you have some uh, rollers, cylinders that will allow you to move the, the items. And here we have some chains, so this looks more like uh, what you see in the airports, moving the persons in the floor. Um, and then also live roller conveyors. Uh, those are, these ones are not, don't have any type of uh, engine or anything connected to it, so this will require a person pushing the, the items. But this one are connected to some type of engine here so they will move the, the materials automatically. Um, also there are some uh, conveyors that will allow you to perform some type of sorting of your items. There's one right here so you can split the units uh, according to your needs. So that's the slat conveyor. Uh, we also have one called the magnetic belt conveyors so some of the things that you move are, are going to be stuck in, into the, the belt so you, you can move them that would depend on the type of material of course and then the final one is the flat belt conveyor um, here's some of them as the vibrating conveyor, these are used more, more in um, the food industry. So here you're trying to split french fries and move them or packing. Um, there's a bucket conveyor here. So you're trying to, these are easy construction. So you're basically moving the materials up to another uh, storage and then the forward position belt or the throughout belt uh, conveyor. Another type of conveyors here, again, these are also depending, it will depend on the type of material that you want to move. So um, the dilute phase pneumatic conveyor, this one basically has some air pushing, so it will allow you to move some of the materials from this location to a higher location. Um, the screw conveyor, well, the design tells you that inside this tube you have something like this that will allow you to push some of the units up or the materials up. And the carrier system pneumatic conveyor, this you can see if you go to a bank in the, on the, in the auto service, you'll see that they have these capsules going. Uh, with air, that's what this conveyor is.
Uh, the vertical lift conveyors, these are used in places such as Amazon, so you're moving boxes most of the time, um, different locations. Park on tracks conveyors. Um, I have not seen this a lot, but um, you basically the idea is that you have a small car moving through these rails and you would push the car um, over the rail to move the item. And reciprocating vertical conveyors, this looks more like an elevator type of um, transportation device. So you have a lot of interaction with uh, employees, operators in this type of, of conveyor. The tow conveyor, this one works basically with cars and the idea is you have some type of rail in which you have the movement of those cars are delimited by the rail. So you basically push the cars on using the same track. Uh, solid conveyors, those are handy, so you put the item and you'll move with uh, that change. Most likely it's going to be uh, attached to the, the ceiling. And same thing here with uh, this example. Um, Power and free conveyors, those are kind of similar to this one, to the trolley conveyors. This gives you another type of configuration. Um, this one might allow you to hold more um, heaviest um, items. Same thing with the monorail. And this one term use in airports a lot. These are the sortation conveyors. So depending on when you're going to send the item, you, you have the same uh, input location, but you know that these items are going to go to different locations. So you have some type of device that will tell you how to sort. Most likely it's going to be a barcode or a tag. So it will send the items to the corresponding rail uh, according to, to that information. And these are um, other type of conveyors that are more flexible, so you can arrange them according to your needs. So this is the pop-up device and the sliding to sorter. And finally, uh, the sortation conveyor heating device and the sortation conveyor cross belt transport device. Um, so this also is kind of like this one, which you provide the, some type of sorting, but this one is based more on amount of unit. This uh, are not necessarily going to different locations. Just want to separate them so you can have a balanced distribution of the of the items. Okay, so those are some of the examples for uh, conveyors. Now we are going to talk a little bit about cranes. So general characteristics of this type of equipment are the following. So these are used to move loads over variable can be horizontal or vertical paths within a restricted area. And they are used when there is insufficient or intermittent flow volume such that the use of a conveyor cannot be justified. 
Okay, so you see now the difference when you can have a conveyor or not. Again, for a conveyor, you need to justify that you have a high volume so you can take the investment. When that's not the case, then you have to look at other options, such as uh, a crane. This one provides more flexibility. <coughs> in movement that conveyors and also provide less flexibility in movement than the industrial trucks. So we haven't talked about <coughs> the industrial trucks yet, but I'm just giving you a little bit of information about how this compares with the next type of transportation or material handle device that we're going to discuss. Um, loads handle are moved, are more varied with respect to their shape and weight than those handled by a conveyor. And most cranes utilize hoists for vertical movement, although manipulators can be used if precise positioning of the load is required. So for the purpose of the exam, you need to understand what are the differences between these transportation and material handling devices? Where it will be good to use one type or the other? Um, you don't have to memorize the specific type of conveyor name. So I'm not going to show you a picture and tell me what's the name of that conveyor. But you need to understand the advantages of the disadvantages of each one of them. Okay, and when to apply some of them. So, cranes are used to move materials over variable paths within a restricted area. And the major types of this type of device are... So, we have four different types. <coughs> First one is called the jeep crane. The second one is bridge crane. We have the gan three crane and the stacker crane. And this picture basically shows you the type of crane that is located in the warehouse. So, um, so for a jeep crane, it looks like this. You're going to have a structure with a pivot and then a trolley that will move according to where you need to place the, the unit. Um, the stagger crane never seen one of these. These are used with, uh, when you have a very large warehouse. Um, so you have such type of device that will move the operator itself with this uh, rail and it will be placing those units according to the location. Um, and then we have the bridge crane right here which is essentially the same idea like the jeep crane, but you have um, more movement because it allows you to move in this direction and also in this direction. Um, the gantry train, again, a uh, different type of Structures, but they change the same idea. Um, you have some type of hanger and some type of structure that will hold that hanger, and you will locate this. Provide you some of them provide you with wheels that will allow you to move them according to where you need them to be placed. Uh, some of them are going to be fixed, like these two, 
And this one has two um, duckers that would occupy more space actually than this one. So again, it, it will depend on uh, the type of art and the requirements that you might have for your uh, product. Um, so that's some of the examples for, for cranes. And again, you will see most of them located in warehouse, warehouses or the facilities. Not, I would say, not, you will not see this in a production area. Most of them are going to be in the warehouse. Then the industrial trucks, these are used to move materials over valuable horizontal paths with no restrictions. On the area cover, so if we go back to our figure here, I think this is a very nice figure for you to remember the differences between them. So again, Chris has a viral path where you have a restricted area, conveyors have a big pad, which is this line. And then industrial truck will give you more uh, space to, uh, to move, and also, uh, which is unrestricted. Uh, so, provide vertical movement if the truck has lifting cap capabilities, and use when there is insufficient or intermittent flow volumes such that the user conveyor cannot be justified. This is the same bullet that we had also for the cranes. Um, provide more flexibility in movement than the conveyors on the crane and not licensed to travel on um, public roads. Commercial trucks are licensed to travel um, on public roads. So this type of material handling device would not be allowed in public roads. So in what we are talking about here are the forklift. Most of them are related to uh, forklift, but we also have some of them that can be are not powered or with an engine. Um, so here are different types of industrial trucks. As you can see, there's also a lot of options. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this group right here. These are the automatic guided vehicles. So this one would not require an operator. They are going to be uh, programmed to move the items from one place to the other in the facility without the assistance of an operator. So that's the AB, AGV um, vehicles. So here are the ones that you will see in, not necessarily in facilities, but also in different areas, the two wheel. Uh, hand truck, the floor hand truck, and these are two different versions. This looks like more uh, like the ones that you have in the hotels. Um, but you'll see this in Sam's, and these ones are used in different places. Um, then these are more industri industrial pack related. Um, forklift. So this one is used a lot, especially when you are done uh, completing a production for a specific client. They have a bank shear, 
and you want to move that pallet to another location in the facility, then you use this type of uh, forklift. Um, these are different configurations. For this one, the operator needs to be standing up, um, but it will be part of the, we will not have to walk. This, will, this thing will transport the, the operator. But this one is a similar version like this one, but you don't have the ports. And, and so on. Um, these are more common. Pretty sure that you're familiar with this one. Um, Forklifts allow you to move the items up and down. Um, specifically, if you want to store them in high uh, locations on your warehouses, um, some of them provide you with the facility of moving the front part of the of the truck. But those, some of them will be fixed, so you don't have that type of flexibility. And these are the AVGs, the ones that I was talking about. Um, so these are automatic, automatic guided vehicles. So you will see no operator. Here's a picture of one of them. So what this thing does is functions like a frame, so you have the guided or some type of strap in the floor basically tells the vehicle where to move. And it will be pulling the items that are on the back to move them to a different location. Bless you. So these trucks are used for moving either mixed or uniform loads inter intermittently over different paths. Uh, while these paths can be somewhat random at the discretion of the driver, the paths are restricted to suitable indoor or outdoor surfaces. Um, the industrial trucks provide not only a means of transporting materials, but also provide a means of accurate lifting in stacking, uh, appropriate tooling for the truck permits users to lift not only the pallet but a wide array of specific specialized loads. Uh, for example, rolls of carpet can are easily moved via in the industrial truck by replacing the standard port with the single tube. So this truck can be found in almost any manufacturing plant. Loading dock. Or warehouses. Uh, the in, in, internal combustion trucks are at the advantage of outdoor use. Uh, they can lift 2,000 to 15,000 pounds with some uh, specialty trucks lifting up to 50 tons. And they can lift up to 20 feet in height and can operate on gasoline, LP gas, or diesel. Um, so the Industrial Truck Association has classified the power dock uh, trucks into seven, seven classes. And here are the seven classes. Electric uh, model rider trucks, electric model narrow aisle trucks, electric model and hand truck, internal combustion, and so on. So there are different classes according to this classification. Each of the classes are divided into lift code, and we have a tutorial model listing, and I'm going to show you that in a few minutes. Uh, so the first five classes are the most common. These five classes.
um, electric motor rider trucks are general purpose trucks and are used primarily indoors. These trucks can lift up to 6 tons and up to 18 feet in height. Um, the same type, but when you have a narrow aisle truck, are used in narrow aisle applications. These trucks are used primarily for storage retrieval in applications similar to the ARRS functions. And they can easily lift from 2,000 to 4,500 pounds in a height of 40 feet. Uh, the internal combustion trucks have the advantage of outdoor use, so they can lift between 2,000 and 15,000 pounds. They can lift up to 20 feet. And the internal combustion trucks are the advantage of, of the outdoor use. So these bullets are repeated. I'm sorry, I apologize. This shouldn't be here. And then I'm showing you some of the classes for each type of um, truck. Again, you don't have to memorize this. This is just in terms of the information that you can find in, in manufacturing city in the future. So you have the information here. So I always advise you to keep these notes close to your desk in case you need to refer them to them back later when you're working. So we have different type of classes for, um, and we also have subclasses for each one of the classes according to this uh, classification scheme. So for class three, we have eight codes. In class four, we have several codes that apply to, to them. Um, so this is not material for the exam. This part, I mean, these tables right here, are for reference purposes, so you might keep them so in the future you can refer back to them. And then we have some pictorial uh, representation for each one of the codes. So this is always good um, also to provide a visual for those uh, classifications. So you can see how these um, truck change according to the classification. And you can find uh, additional information about this in this uh, web page. No, again, I'm not going to ask you to identify based on pictures in the exam. These are just for reference purposes. Okay. So when you go to the professional setting, you need to refer back to this and have the information. So pictorial questions like this, like tell me what this is, that's not going to be part of the okay. And that, um, let's see, one more thing. I think I'm going to stop here and we're going to start from here next uh, Monday. Any questions? So next Monday we're going to start with position and equipment. Um, I'm going to post the homework today. I told you that I was going to post the homework on Monday, but we didn't have enough to create the homework, so I'm going to post the homework today. That homework is going to be due on Monday, and we might use that homework as part of the review. So make sure that you work on the homework and you come up with questions.